in today's class <coughs> we will define some terms that are very important to understand the language of crystallography okay but uh, before defining those terms let us recapitulate the definition of crystals what do you mean by crystal crystal is a So what do you mean by a crystal? Crystal is a form of solid in which the constituent particles, the constituent particles are arranged in a regular, very systematic and periodic manner in three dimensions and also there is a long range order of arrangement and when I say constituent particles the particle may be ion in which case the solid is called an ionic solid the constituent particle may be uh, atoms uh, generally made up of metals in which case it is called as a metallic solid the constant particle may be organic molecules in which case it is called as uh, a molecular solid okay so the constant particles can be anything it can be ions it can be atoms or it can be uh, molecules even nowadays a very complex structure like protein can be crystallized Okay, you can even get a crystal of a very complicated protein molecule. Okay, what does that such a crystal contain? In such a crystal, the protein molecules are arranged in a regular, systematic and periodic manner, uh, one after the another. Now, let me take a simple example, for example, sodium chloride. Okay, let me give a crystal structure. As an example, suppose the sodium and chloride ions in sodium chloride is arranged something like this in this fashion. Okay. And when I am writing the structure of sodium chloride, okay, this is just an example. This need not be the correct structure of sodium chloride. The correct structure of sodium chloride will be studied later okay in our one of our future classes we will draw the correct structure of sodium chloride so the example i have given here may not be the correct structure this is this should be taken only as an example to understand the concept okay so let us assume that sodium and chloride ions are arranged in the crystal of sodium chloride in this fashion okay here you can see that there is a systematic arrangement of ions in all the directions of course we can only draw two directions or two dimensions in a sheet of paper the third type the third dimension cannot be drawn on the on a sheet of paper so if you look at in any direction there is a periodic arrangement okay if i see the arrangement of particle in this particular direction there is a systematic way in which ions are arranged you have one sodium ion one chloride ion again you have one sodium ion and one chloride ion so there is an alternative arrangement of sodium and chloride ions similarly if you look in this direction vertically downwards here also there is a systematic and periodic arrangement uh, an alternative arrangement of sodium and chloride ion if you see in any other direction for example in this particular direction here also there is a systematic arrangement of course the nature of arrangement is different but anyway uh, anyways there is a systematic periodic arrangement you have sodium ions kept or placed at equal distances if you choose any other direction say for example in this direction okay you can see that at equal distances there is a chloride ion found in the crystal okay and also the distance between these two ions is same as the distance between the next two ions which is same as the distance between the next two ions Okay, so this is the nature of periodic arrangement.
okay here we have taken a simple example of sodium chloride where the constant particles are uh, ions simple ions but if i try to draw such a uh, arrangement for a crystal containing protein molecules the task would become very difficult because writing the structure of one protein molecule itself is very difficult it itself is very tedious in such a case if i want to draw the crystal structure of a protein molecule it would be a very very difficult task to draw the crystal structure containing such complex protein molecule so what is the alternative how can i simplify the process of drawing or representing the crystal structure crystal structure is nothing but the arrangement of constant particles in uh, three dimension or for our example it is two dimension okay so how to draw such complicated structure and understand the crystal structure for this the the, uh, the scientists have devised an alternative method where we use the concept of what is called as lattice points okay so in today's class we will understand the concept and also we will define what is lattice point what is lattice plane what is space lattice unit cell and so on so forth okay first let us define what is a lattice point for that i will take the example of sodium chloride structure again okay uh, it is a very simple structure here even if i don't use the concept of lattice point it is possible to draw the crystal structure uh, easily but how would the crystal structure look if i draw the structure in in terms of lattice point what we do here is we assign a point a geometrical point to each and every ion present in the crystal lattice okay so here what i will do is i will draw a point here in space and this point represents the position of sodium ion in the crystal now at a particular distance from the sodium ion you have a chloride ion okay so to understand that sodium and chloride ions are different what i will do is i will use a different colored point okay say for example green color point okay so this green color point represents the position of chloride ion in the crystal structure okay so what we are basically doing is we are replacing the particles ions atoms or molecules by points and here i have used uh, different colors to distinguish uh, one ion from another ion and remember the distance between these two points okay is proportional to the exact distance between sodium and chloride ion in the true crystal okay that is very very important i cannot arbitrarily draw these points in space okay when i draw there are some rules that have to be followed what are those rules we will understand uh, in a few minutes okay so let me uh, continue with this uh, structure okay after chloride ion again you have a sodium ion okay again it is represented by a point and i am using a red color to represent the position of sodium okay followed by another chloride ion which is represented by a green color as i already told you the distance between any two lattice points should be of the same scale as the distance between the ions in the actual crystal structure okay similarly in the next line you have uh, uh, chloride ions okay let me complete it uh, in a fast forward manner okay so you have sodium ion in the next line you have again sodium ion and in between you have chloride ions okay and this completes the crystal structure of sodium chloride so what we have done is we have simplified the process or procedure to draw the crystal structure of sodium chloride what we have done is we have replaced the constituent particles by some point okay and those points are nothing but called as lattice points and here we should define what does this red colored point represents 
the red colored point represents sodium ion and the green colored point represents chloride ion okay so any person who looks at this uh, figure can easily understand that the simple diagram that I have drawn is actually the crystal structure of sodium chloride okay so this is the reality but the simplified version of sodium chloride looks something like this so uh, when we are supposed to draw the crystal structure of complex uh, protein molecules okay what we do is we follow the same procedure for uh, the crystal of uh, proteins each point now represents a protein molecule okay uh, so you can easily understand this understand that this process of uh, replacing the real particles by lattice points uh, really simplifies our uh, procedure or task of drawing the crystal structure okay but it is very very important that once you draw the crystal structure using lattice point you have to define what is that lattice point mean means okay for example here red colored lattice point represents sodium ion green colored lattice point represents chloride ion okay and you can see that the way the lattice points are drawn here okay it is same as the way sodium and chloride ions are placed in the actual crystal structure let me give another example which will uh, simplify any doubts suppose if you have a another ionic solid say for example x y okay x may be anything y may be anything one is cation another is anion okay so the actual actual crystal structure looks something like this x y x y okay x y x y x y x y x y x y okay you can see that the appearance of uh, the arrangement of this particular crystal is different from that of sodium chloride okay here in each layer you have alternate alternative arrangement of x ions and y ions okay but the structure is somewhat tilted or slanted compared to sodium chloride so how will you represent this crystal structure by using the concept of lattice point okay how we do is something like this again to distinguish uh, the two ions we will use different colors okay And let us define what is this green color. Green color represents X. Red color represents Y. Okay. So, the left hand side is the real crystal structure. The actual crystal structure. The right hand side is the depiction of the crystal structure by using the concept of lattice point but remember when when you draw a crystal structure in terms of lattice point it is very very important to define what is the meaning of each and every lattice point okay so this and you can also see that this arrangement of lattice points res resembles the way in which x and y ions are actually arranged in the real crystal structure so we are not disturbing the real crystal structure but we are simplifying the process of drawing the crystal structure this is especially useful when we are uh, speaking about the crystal structure of complex molecules okay so let us now define what is a lattice point i hope you have understood the concept of lattice point whatever we have understood okay we are now formally defining it okay a lattice point a lattice point in a crystal is an imaginary point okay it is for our convenience we have we are devising it 
so it is an imaginary point that represents the position of the constituent particles that is atoms, ions, molecules in some case even group of molecules okay in a crystal this is the definition of lattice point the next definition we will learn now is lattice plane or plane lattice okay what do you mean by a plane a plane is nothing but a two dimensional geometry okay so the arrangement of lattice points in two dimension is called as a lattice plane an orderly periodic systematic arrangement of lattice points in two dimension is called as a lattice plane remember crystal is arrangement of lattice points in three dimension but I, as, so, as I already mentioned it is very difficult to draw a three dimensional structure in a two dimensional sheet of paper or on the uh, blackboard okay so most of the times what we do is we uh, draw a two dimensional structure and uh, try to visualize how we, the actual crystal structure look will look in three dimension so most of the times we have to use a two dimensional version of the crystal structure okay so in that view this la definition of lattice plane or plane lattice is very very important i repeat okay since we cannot draw the real crystal structure in a sheet of paper because it is a three dimensional arrangement we have to uh, use an alternative way of drawing the crystal structure in two dimensions and we have to visualize what is the real thing in three dimension so in that point of view this lattice plane or plane lattice becomes very very important the two diagrams that have shown in the above case are actually plane lattice okay so this is an example for plane lattice or lattice plane this is also an example for plane lattice or lattice plane because the lattice points are arranged in a very systematic periodic and regular manner in two dimensions okay let me draw some lattice plane and uh, try to give as many examples as possible so that uh, you can digest the concept of lattice plane okay here i am using the lattice points of same color what does it mean what does it mean is each lattice point represents same atom or same molecule so this is an example of a plane lattice okay and if we mention the directions here the horizontal direction represents x axis and the vertical direction represents y axis okay in crystallography sometimes we use a in, instead of x and b instead of y okay so you can call it as a axis as well as b axis okay so this is an example for two dimensional arrangement or lattice plane let me give another example here again i am assuming that each lattice point are identical that means they represent same atoms or molecules so this is also an example for a two dimensional arrangement that is lattice plane but you can clearly see that the 
arrangement given in the first example is different from the arrangement given in the second example okay let me use some more let us now assume that uh, there are two types of lattice points in the crystal structure Okay, this is another type of arrangement compared to the first arrangement two things are different here you can observe two differences one is there are uh, two types of lattice points in the arrangement the another difference that you could observe is the distance between the lattice points in two directions here the distance between two neighboring lattice points is same both in x direction as well as y direction Okay, that is the case here also. The distance between two lattice points in both the directions are same. But in this case, the distance between the two lattice points, two neighboring lattice points are different along the two directions. So that is why this arrangement is different from the first two examples. Okay, similarly you can give other type of examples. If I take one more example. This is another type of two dimensional arrangement of lattice points and therefore it is another example for lattice plane or plane lattice okay now if I join the lattice points by lines okay neighboring lattice points by lines Now this looks like a square okay why it looks like the square because all sides are having are equal in length and the angle between any two lines that are drawn is 90 degree so this type of lattice is called as square lattice okay if I join the neighboring lattice points here the geometry looks like a rectangle because here the angle between these two lines is 90 degree but the lengths of uh, the two uh, perpendicular lines are different okay so this looks like a rectangular so such type of lattice arrangement is called as rectangular lattice and these two are called as orthogonal lattice because the angle between these two lines is 90 degrees such type of lattice arrangement is called as orthogonal lattice arrangement whereas here if I join the neighboring points okay the angle between these two lines is not equal to 90 degree so this is an example for non orthogonal lattice or also sometimes called as oblique lattice okay oblique lattice okay this uh, we do not require in much detail but uh, to know we should know some minimum stuff about all this uh, when you uh, study the a uh, course on uh, advanced crystallography you will uh, discuss about all these things in detail okay now if you imagine or consider a line in any particular direction for example if I consider this arrangement you can see that there is a systematic arrangement of lattice points in this particular direction which is a one-dimensional arrangement so this one-dimensional arrangement can be called as a lattice line okay so if it is one-dimensional arrangement it is a line that is lattice line if it is a two dimensional arrangement of lattice points it is called as plane lattice or lattice plane okay similarly this arrangement 
is also an example for lattice line because there is a very systematic periodic arrangement in this particular direction. You can also take this as, as an example for lattice line. Okay, this arrangement is also uh, very systematic, periodic, regular in that particular direction and therefore you can call this as a lattice line. Okay. So this is the concept of lattice plane or plane lattice. Now we will define what is called as space lattice or crystal lattice. As I already told you, the real crystal is nothing but systematic, periodic, regular arrangement of constituent particles or lattice points in three dimension. That is nothing but called as crystal lattice or space lattice. So space lattice or crystal lattice is nothing but the real crystal structure. Okay. And orderly, regular, periodic arrangement of lattice points in three dimension is called space lattice or crystal lattice nothing but crystal okay nothing but crystal so let me draw a crystal lattice and you may practice this by yourself because when we in one of our future class uh, try to draw the crystal structure of sodium chloride this would be very useful okay so for that what I will do is I will draw a cube first and uh, you should pardon me for the shape of the cube okay I, I will not be able to draw a perfect cube but nevertheless it will look like a cube to some extent okay so what I have done is first I have drawn a cube now I will divide this cube into eight small cubes okay so within this cube i will uh, now generate eight small cubes okay for that what we will do is we will divide each of this uh, square surface into four parts okay each surface you know that a cube has a six surface so what i am doing is i am dividing the each surface or each plane into four equal parts okay so actually it, it looks like a rectangle but each of it is a square okay similarly i will do with this front surface with the back surface okay so all the six faces of the cube are divided into four identical squares I have to draw some more lines I will join these two points similarly I will join these two points and I will join these two points finally okay you can see here that the original cube the large cube is uh, now divided into eight identical cubes now let me place lattice points at each of the corners okay each of the corners so each corner the eight corners are occupied by lattice points okay similarly the center of each edges or lines okay is also a lattice point each edge center of each line is a lattice point 
here I am assuming that uh, we have only one type of particle in the system so wherever the lines bisect I am drawing a lattice point okay this is one possible type of arrangement of lattice points okay I hope I have not missed any of the such points I, I, have, I have drawn lattice points at each and every position okay so this is a systematic periodic regular orderly arrangement of lattice points in three dimension okay here i have drawn only 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 27 lattice points okay but in real crystal there will be millions of molecules okay not even millions it there may be 10 to the power 20 or 10 to the power 18 number of lattice points or molecules okay we cannot keep on drawing all those things uh, therefore i have only selected a portion of the real space lattice okay a small portion of the real space lattice so this is an example for space lattice okay. uh, we will come back to the um, procedure for drawing this type of space lattice when once we discuss the crystal structure of sodium chloride and potassium chloride so these are the definitions of lattice points plane lattice and lattice uh, space lattice now we will define a very important entity of crystallography called as unit cell okay let us first understand the definition of unit cell by taking some examples okay by cracking down some examples we try to understand the definition and property of a unit cell so if you look at this picture you can see that uh, of course this is a plane lattice okay now if you want to draw the uh, lattice plane of a crystal you need not draw the entire structure okay i can select a very small portion of this square lattice which would actually represents the entire arrangement okay the square that i have drawn here is the smallest entity that represents the entire arrangement okay it is like the tiles arranged on the wall or floor okay if you want to understand how the tiles are arranged on the wall you need not look at the entire wall okay if you just look at one portion of the wall it is easy to understand how this how these tiles are arranged in the entire wall okay why because there is a systematic periodic arrangement you a wall at the floor in a yaudi on the segment at the portion kade nodi dhulu kuda nimge entire arrangement entire wall yav tara arrange agide tiles yav tara arrange madidare anta nimge picture sigutade nimge on idea sigutade so nimge entire wall annu nodu anta avashyakate illa so same logic applies here you entire crystal lattice at was plane lattice annu nodbekada avashyakate illa yakandre illu kuda lattice points yav tara arrange agide andre systematic periodic regular fashion alli arrange agirudrinda look at one small segment okay a small segment annu tokondre adralli lattice points yav tara arrange agide anta nimge gottadre nimge entire plane lattice athwa crystal lattice baggene nimge information sikida sikidaga aagutade okay so that smallest portion of the uh, crystal structure is called as a unit cell okay so once you select the smallest portion which is called as unit cell a unit cell anu ondra pakka ondanna jodistha hodre that would give the entire lattice plane or uh, crystal lattice okay let me so if i draw another unit cell idra pakka one unit cell draw martene adra pakka mattond unit cell draw martene x axis alli ade rithi y axis alli kuda unit cell draw martene ondra pakka bandu okay so if i keep the unit cell one next to the other that would give the entire plane lattice ade moorne dimension and the z direction alli kuda nanu unit cells annu 
ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ದಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಗಿವ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ಟಲ್ ಲ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಬಟ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ವೆನ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಸಮ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಸಮ್ ಪ್ರಿಕಾಷನ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಯಾವುದೋ ಒಂದು ಸ್ಮಾಲೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅನ್ನು ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದರೆ ಅದನ್ನೇ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಕರೀಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈ ಸಮ್ ಕ್ರೈಟೀರಿಯಾ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಕ್ರೈಟೀರಿಯಾ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಡಿಫೈನ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಸೊ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಮಾಲೆಸ್ಟ್ structural part of a space lattice which when repeated over and over again in three dimension generates the entire crystal or space lattice okay let me draw you one example i am drawing a square lattice Okay, so this is the arrangement of lattice points in two dimension, which is a square lattice. So, we have to identify the unit cell in this uh, diagram or arrangement. Okay, as the definition suggests, unit cell is the smallest structural part of the space lattice, which when repeated over and over again in three dimension, generates the entire crystal space, uh, crystal lattice or space lattice. Of course, in our example, we are not going to prove three dimension. we are restricting ourselves to two dimension so first we have to select the correct unit cell okay it is the smallest part okay suppose if i select this as the smallest part of course if you take this square when compared to this square this triangle has having lesser area compared to this square so automatically question comes this is smaller in area compared to this square so as per the definition it should be the unit cell of this particular arrangement but the answer is no even though this is the smallest this is not the correct unit cell this is the correct unit cell why because unit cell has to satisfy several condition of course it should be the smallest but that is not the only requirement okay apart from that it has to satisfy one more condition what is that it is when the unit cell is repeated over and over again you should generate the entire crystal lattice to simplify it okay the unit cell should have the same shape and geometry as that of the crystal lattice okay so the two important criteria and unit cell should satisfy is it should be smallest structure structural entity and so both condition should be satisfied simultaneously it should have same shape and geometry in simple words it should have the same symmetry as that of crystal lattice okay now it is clear that in order to satisfy the second condition we cannot select triangle as the unit cell in this present example we have to go for square because out of the smallest structure it is the one which is having the same shape and symmetry as that of the entire crystal structure okay entire crystal structure if i draw the boundary of this crystal structure it looks like a square so this is the one which is having the same 
symmetry as that of the crystal lattice and it is the one which is having the smallest volume so this satisfies both the condition therefore square is the correct choice of unit cell okay if i take another example suppose this is the two dimensional arrangement that is lattice plane here the obvious choice of unit cell is at this one okay again we cannot select a triangle okay you could ask what about this this is having the same shape and geometry so which should i select either this or this again the answer is this is the correct choice this is the not the correct choice why because even though both of them are having the same symmetry as that of the crystal lattice we have to opt for the one which is having the smallest area or volume so in this case both the conditions are satisfied by this particular uh, entity and therefore it is the correct choice of unit cell okay if you look into a three dimensional structure that is a crystal lattice of space lattice okay so this is the space lattice here the correct choice of unit cell would be one of the small cubes okay let me use a separate color so if i select one of the cubes that i am shading by yellow color this cube is the unit cell of this particular crystal structure why because it is having the smallest volume we cannot imagine a structure which is having volume lesser than this okay and uh, it is having the same symmetry as that of the entire crystal structure arrangement so that is the correct choice of uh, the unit cell okay when and remember when you are drawing unit cell of course they should contain lattice points at least at the corners okay so uh, we cannot uh, select some uh, arbitrary unit cell without lattice points uh, that is very very important when you are drawing or selecting a unit cell they should contain lattice points at least at the corners we will see some examples where there are lattice points in the unit cell uh, other than corners okay so this is the concept of unit cell let me again remind you the two important criteria a unit cell should satisfy okay it should having it should have the smallest volume or area and it should have the same shape and geometry that is symmetry as that of the entire crystal lattice and this is very very important because each and every time we cannot draw the entire crystal structure it is enough if we draw the structure of the unit cell because it contains all the information that is required to understand the complete crystal structure these unit cells okay are of different types depending on the position of the lattice points in the unit cell you can have different types of unit cells okay there are two types of unit cells one is called as primitive unit cell the other is non primitive unit cell okay this is also called as simple unit cell okay and this classification is based on the position the lattice points occupy in the unit cell okay you can have other types of classification but this classification is based on the position of lattice points okay position of lattice points in the unit cell so first let us define uh, what is primitive unit cell uh, before that in non primitive unit cell 
you have what is called as body centered unit cell and face centered unit cells okay there are further other uh, types of uh, classification you can even have uh, what is called as end centered unit cell okay we will not go into all those details uh, on a simpler note a unit cell can be a primitive unit cell a body centered unit cell or a face centered unit cell okay we will restrict ourselves into these three types of unit cell let us define one by one so what is a primitive or simple unit cell okay a unit cell in which lattice points are present only in corners of the cell such unit cell is called as a primitive unit cell okay all the examples that i have given while explaining the concept of unit cell all the examples i have given are actually example for simple unit cell or primitive unit cell okay so let me draw a cube which is a unit cell okay a cube has eight corners and six surfaces or six faces each and every corner is occupied by lattice point and no other position in the unit cell is occupied by a lattice point so this type of unit cell is called as a simple unit cell or primitive unit cell why because lattice points are present only at eight corners okay then what is body centered unit cell body centered cell or body centered unit cell here in body centered unit cell lattice points are not only present in the corners eight corners but also present inside the body of the unit cell such type of unit cell is called as body centered unit cell okay let me draw a body centered unit cell again i am drawing a cubic cell a cubic unit cell again you have eight lattice points at eight corners along with that inside the unit cell at the center you have additional lattice point okay so this type of uh, unit cell is called as a body centered unit cell finally you have face centered unit cell what is a face centered unit cell here lattice points are not only present in the <coughs> corners that is eight corners but also present at the center of each face of the cell as i already told you a three dimensional object like a cube has eight corners and six faces okay so in the case of a face centered unit cell again by default i am assuming that the cell unit cell is cubic in shape okay 
Now in a face centered unit cell you have lattice points at each and every corner so there are eight lattice points in the corner along with that you have lattice point at the center of each faces okay so these are the four faces plus you have one face towards you and another face behind us so all together there are uh, eight uh, six faces okay to simplify this uh, let me draw a line that would give a correct picture okay so these are the six surfaces which I have joined by using the three mutually perpendicular lines okay whereas here okay okay let me not complicate this these lines just indicates that uh, this lattice point is inside the body of the unit cell so you have a lattice point inside the unit cell so this is how we classify unit cells okay you have a primitive or simple unit cell a body centered unit cell and face centered unit cell let us quickly calculate the average number of particle present in a unit cell average number of particles present per unit cell how to calculate the average number of particles okay for that let us go to the three-dimensional example okay here if I take this particular lattice point which is present in the corner you can see that this lattice point does not belong to entirely to one unit cell it is shared by actually eight cubes okay it is shared by one two three four and you have four behind one two three four so this particular lattice point in the corner is shared by eight cube so what is the uh, share for one cube it is only 1 by 8 okay so uh, from this uh, observation we can see that say that each lattice point in the corner is shared by 8 unit cell so the share for one unit cell is only 1 divided by 8 okay let me write here each lattice point in corner is shared by 8 unit cells therefore one unit cell gets only one eighth share of each lattice point so by taking into account shall we calculate how many number of particles are present in a simple unit cell a simple unit cell has how many corners a simple unit cell has eight corners and lattice point in each corner okay is shared by eight neighboring unit cell so each lattice point only contributes one eighth to this particular unit cell okay only one eighth of the share belong to the unit cell that I have drawn here remaining is shared by others so based on this fact the average number of particle present in a simple unit cell is equal to there are eight corners and in each corner the share of the lattice point is only 1 by 8 so that works out to be 1 particle per a simple unit cell.
okay so on an average only one particle is present in a simple unit cell now let us talk about a body centered unit cell here you have two types of lattice points okay one type is the lattice point present in the corner the other type that is present inside the body of the unit cell already we know about the lattice points in the corner okay each uh, unit cell gets only one eighth of the contribution or share of the lattice point at the corner what about the lattice point at the center or inside the body of the unit cell you can easily visualize and understand that the lattice point that that is present inside the unit cell belongs entirely to one particular unit cell so it is not shared with any other unit cell so the total contribution of that lattice point is full one share okay so based on that okay let me write here the lattice point present in the body of the unit cell is not shared with any other cell therefore it gives full contribution to one cell so based on this we can calculate the average number of particle per unit cell okay so you have eight corners and the lattice point in each corner contributes one eighth plus you have one lattice point at the body and its contribution is full one okay so it is eight into one by eight plus one into one which is two particle per body center cell similarly you can calculate the average number of particle in a face centered cell okay here again you have two types of lattice points one at the corner the other at each and every faces of the unit cell okay and you can see that the lattice point present on the face of face unit cell is shared between two unit cells okay so if i draw another unit cell here another unit cell here okay for convenience you can see that this particular lattice point is shared equally shared between these two unit cells the same uh, argument holds good for each and every lattice points on the face okay so based on this argument we can write the lattice point at the face of the unit cell is shared between two cells therefore uh, each cell gets only half share of each lattice point present on the face so based on this we can make the calculation number of particles per unit cell that is face centered unit cell is equal to again there are eight corners and the lattice point in the corner contributes to one eight share plus how many surfaces a, a cube has a cube has six surfaces and the lattice point on each surface it gives a contribution of half so it is 8 into 1 by 8 plus 6 into half which is equal to 4 particles per a face centered unit cell okay so the important difference between a simple body centered and face centered unit cell apart from their definition is that the number of particles present in the unit cells are different on an average there is one particle in a simple unit cell two particles in a body centered unit cell and four particles in a face centered unit cell okay so with this i conclude this video in the next class 
we will touch upon some some more basic fundamental concepts uh, uh, related to crystallography okay such as crystal systems types of crystal systems okay then we will go into uh, the symmetry some of the basic symmetry that could be observed in a crystal then uh, we will go to the fundamental laws of crystallography and then we will move to some application uh, related topics such as uh, uh, lattice planes miller indices and so on okay that would be the videos uh, topics that would be covered in the coming videos thank you students